This is almost funny being inside compared to when I was sitting on the porch just uh, four feet away and turned around the other way. <laughs> that uh, it's so much quieter, but I don't hear the birds singing, you know, and I don't get a chance to feel the wind blowing. And of course, I don't hear the city noise, and I'm not confronted by the heat wave that right now is only in the 80s. But there's something nice, though, about being able to just sit here and unwind, relax, be still, to not be distracted sometimes even by the things that are natural around me that are outside the trees and the bright sunshine but sometimes being inside you know it's good to close your eyes and to lose track of the focus of your input so you can walk away and think about not your priorities and what you need to get done today but what his priorities are who he is. There are times that I think about God, you know, and I think of the Father and I have one image and picture and my mind wanders and I relate and it's almost as though once I start thinking down that thought process, it's almost like a there's some kind of filament connection that God reaches out and comes back and meets me and we connect. And, and he reveals to me himself and then I smile of course first and it gets better and better and clearer and clearer and then at times you know I think about Jesus and that too it's almost like my mind wanders and I step outside of myself and suddenly I'm there with him and like a brother he's there and I feel comforted and consoled and I talk to him and he with me Other times, hmm. even in worship at times, I guess, or with song or even in silence. The Holy Spirit, for me, is completely different and not all emotion, but sometimes just as gentle as the breeze that comes in the afternoon when I'm still and I think the right thought or I consider the right emotion or I'm somehow in connection with God and it's almost as though the Spirit is drawn to me. And it's like He draws to me, and I feel Him like the tide of the ocean want to draw me with Him to a place that I don't comprehend yet. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Maybe it could be for you. The next best thing to do for everyone that asks, receives. Ask if you have not received. There is nothing more difficult than to ask. We will long and desire and crave and suffer, but not until we are at the extreme limit will we ask. A sense of unreality makes us ask. Have you ever asked out of the depths of moral poverty? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. But be sure that if you do lack wisdom, you cannot bring yourself up against reality when you like. The next best thing to do if you are not spiritually real is to ask God for the Holy Spirit. On the word of Jesus, see Luke 11:13, ask for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes real in you all that Jesus did for you. For everyone that asks, receives. This does not mean you will not get if you do not ask. Matthew 5.45 But until you get to the point of asking, you won't receive from God. To receive means you have come to the revelation of a child of God, and now you perceive with intelligence and moral appreciation and spiritual understanding that these things come from God. If any of you lack wisdom, if you realize you are lacking, it is because you have come to contact with spiritual reality. Do not put your reasonable blinkers back on again once you do. Ask means beg. Some people are poor enough to be interested in their poverty, and some of us are like that spiritually. 
We will never receive if we ask with an end in view. If we ask, not out of our poverty, but out of our lust. A pauper does not ask for any other reason than the abject, panging condition of his poverty. He is not ashamed to beg. Blessed are the paupers in spirit. And what that's saying is that, I know it sounded confusing because it's kind of like an archaic old way of relating the fact that if you're asking because you want to get something, then you're not really asking for wisdom. But if you know that you're just like, oh God, I don't get it, I don't understand, help, then you get it. Because you recognize that you don't know. You recognize you don't have any other options. You recognize that there is nothing in you that can solve it, can relate it, can come into contact with it, and make it real. But guess what? Ha! That's where God wants you to be. <laughs> Backwards thinking, isn't it? He doesn't want you smart enough to figure it out. He wants you dumb enough to realize you can't do it. And when you do, you get wisdom. The hilarity of that is that People say, well, you know, your religion's a crutch. I hope so. <laughs> God, I hope so. If it's not, then what am I doing with it? My relationship is the greatest obsession and possession by God coming and possessing me because I can't do anything of myself. If I do, I'll fall all over myself and trip up and stumble and I'll walk right out the day without reading my devotional and guess what? Get hit by a car or a care or a Christian and blow him out of the water or a non-Christian and blow them out of the water but now if I do seek the Lord if I do talk with him today before I deal with the world and its ways or before I deal with myself looking in the mirror or before I even have a thought that comes into my mind then I can have wisdom and you know I might read Proverbs a little differently then when it says to desire wisdom above all else. I might read Psalms a little differently when it talks about wisdom. I might recognize that wisdom is more than it appears to be. But I can only recognize it if I acknowledge I don't have any of it. And I need it from God. Don't you today? Personally, I think so.